The Arsenal Camera Assistant. Is this the next piece of technology that's going to revolutionize photography? Or is this just a gadget that we're going to forget about in 12 months? Learn more about what it is and what I think about it in this video. I'm Terrence from Photography in 123. Before I get into this video, do me a favor, click on subscribe below so I can keep bringing you videos as often as I can to help you develop your photography. The Arsenal is a camera gadget that's been touted all over social media. I first came across some of the ads on Facebook, and I thought it looked pretty interesting. That's why I decided to check out what it was and get you some info on it. The first thing you find out about the Arsenal Camera Assistant is that it's a device that connects to your camera and automates a whole host of tasks for the photographer. Uh, it's touted as an artificial intelligence device to take a lot of the guesswork out of photography and be able to uh, assess a scene based on what it sees or based on what you input by your smart uh, device connected to it and adjust all the right settings so you get the perfect technical picture for that scenario. The creator, Ryan Stout, has actually been pretty successful in terms of raising money for this uh, as of uh, when I'm looking at this today on, uh, I think it's March 18th, he has 15,766 backers pledging $2.6 million and uh, if you take a look at the main Arsenal page uh, they've raised that on Kickstarter and a total of $8 million of capital raised. Pretty impressive for uh, for what he is trying to do here so that's pretty cool. However, I want to note that given this that he's raised money on Kickstarter and, uh, and some other sources uh, what you need to know is this is not something that's available quite yet uh, this is something they've been building and they don't have a final product shipped yet. Uh, if you actually go to the Kickstarter page and I think it was under uh, yeah, the update section that I was just on, uh, looks like they are uh, uh, trying to do shipping for April this year, 2018. Note though, if you kind of look at the history and when I've looked at the other pages, they initially had a previous goal and in fact they had a previous Kickstarter for this. Uh, which did not hit uh, their milestone um, fundraising amounts, which was cancelled. Uh, it was set up again. They were able to hit their milestone at that point, but then they had some previous dates which they did not meet uh, and got surpassed. And now the current date is April. So if you are interested in a device like this, uh, after you watch this video, take note that uh, maybe they'll hit April. Maybe they'll hit a later date and maybe it will never come to fruition. So that's a bit of the risk of uh, something like this when you have a startup on Kickstarter. Uh, it could turn out to be uh, really great and uh, and you get what you want. Or you just may never see the device and uh, and you, uh, your funds went to, um, to start up something that uh, never succeeded. So what they're actually saying with this product is um, you know, take full wireless control of your camera and never miss a perfect shot. I've got a few uh, bones to pick with that statement, but I'll get to that in a moment, uh, so I don't really think that's a true statement. But what they're really doing is giving you uh, a, a lot of in-field options for doing something tricky. So in this case here, uh, the image you're showing, they're doing some photo stacking. So if you're not familiar with this, you're taking a picture with wide aperture, meaning something's going to be in focus, something's going to be out of focus and because you're doing that likely because of the lighting situation so you take something that's near in focus then mid then a little further and a little further and you you do you know three four five eight ten twenty however many shots slightly changing your focal point so there's different parts of the image in focus and you would normally use software to stack them together as they say to take all the clear parts and put them in the one image like they're doing here and Something like that, I having an on-camera device to do that, fantastic. I think that's a really cool device. So that's one of the things I, uh, I find that's pretty neat with this. And if we head over and take a look at some of the other features that they uh, they tout on here, so taking uh, sharp, sharper photos, uh, so it's gonna customize your settings based on the lens and the camera you're using, uh, and you know essentially figure out what settings should be used and then set them for you and take the photo. Uh, you know, you can use your viewer uh, on your smartphone to uh, to see the scene and make adjustments there. 
stacking, which I, uh, I mentioned. Uh, you know, they're showing you could take, um, this is essentially just using bracketing, which is, uh, you know, taking something at a, a darker exposure, mid exposure, lighter exposure, and then merging them together. So you get a cool photo like that. And stacking is a great technique. So if it's automating something like that, that's, uh, that's fantastic. I do really like that idea quite a bit. Uh, capturing long exposures. You know, that one, frankly, is easy to do on your DSLR. I don't know why you need a device like this to do that. But, uh, you know, they're talking about a whole bunch of different techniques uh, that you could do in your DSLR right now, and sometimes you'd have to use software afterwards to use to get the photo that you want. On the Arsenal, uh, it has got the processing and the, the smarts in there uh, to do it all on your, on your camera with this device connected to it. And I think some of the... I'm assuming, and I don't know for sure because I don't get into it on the site that I've seen, uh, the data, the photos go into the device that attaches to your camera uh, on, on the top there and does the processing, does the logic for you. Perfect stuff. Um, some of the stuff you don't really need to do it. Uh, time lapse to your journey. I think I saw some, uh, some photos or some section where they said they could do star trails. That's actually pretty cool. I find that one to be tricky. Uh, so having a device that would do that would be uh, fantastic, that I would like. However, where I, I come into an issue with that uh, earlier statement the site made, um, where's the home where it says, uh, never miss the perfect shot. So, you know what, photography is not about technical perfection. The technique to get a really clear, sharp image and get the effect that you want, certainly critical to being a good photographer, but that is just the baseline you need to get anything half decent created. Photography uh, is really about the eye for the scene, the composition, adding the story to it, uh, and that's something that a device on your camera won't be able to do. Uh, you know, I, I noticed another photographer, YouTuber, uh, James Popsis, says the same thing uh, in a video he made several months back on this, uh, so shout out to him. Uh, that you know he was on top of this and he, uh, he saw this a while back and made the same kind of comment that that this is not going to make you a good photographer this is just going to make you um, make your photos technically proficient which don't get me wrong that's uh, this useful thing but is not going to make you a good photographer because those uh, the skills of the composition and the story and, and all those other aspects can never be replaced uh, by a little device you put in your camera However, the question of would I ever use one of these? You know what, I, I have to say the jury is out. Um, I actually like doing a lot of these techniques on my own, like long exposures I love doing. And once you learn the technique and you go through the, uh, the pain of struggle of, of perfecting it, there's an appreciation I get personally of, uh, of doing it. Uh, and you know, actually in the case of the long exposure, say do it without the need for ND filters. I don't know if you could replicate the exact same experience without an ND filter because you're not going to be able to use the same aperture uh, if you're not using an ND filter. I'm not sure how they'd be able to uh, to do that on this device by getting a long exposure but using, I would assume they're going to use a, uh, uh, a narrower aperture. Um, so there's a bunch of these things that you really don't need this for but there there are some aspects that, uh, that I, I think you would. Like the Star Trail one, which I mentioned, uh, the photo stacking one here. These are things I probably would want to use a device like this for. And I, I'd probably think, hey, you know what? I wouldn't mind giving this a try. So back in my mind, I'm almost tempted to get one if uh, they do finally get it out. And I do see that uh, there's good feedback from people. Then, uh, then maybe I'll, I'll give it a try. Uh, you know, but obviously things like Taking sharper photos, I've got a video all about how to do that. I mean, those are just techniques uh, anybody could apply fairly simply if you know what you're doing. Um, but for the other stuff, uh, I, I think it would be cool. And based on what they're saying, it looks like they are still targeting uh, April 2018. Uh, that's for the pre-orders. And then for other orders, it looks like it's going to be June 2018. So, you know, if you are interested, uh, I would suggest 
wait till the pre-orders are out, wait a couple months, start looking, uh, or even just a month, look on YouTube for people giving feedback and see what they say, and then make a, a judgment call from there. If you are a beginner to novice person and thinking this is a great way to jump in your ability, do not get one of these. Uh, sorry, Ryan Stout, uh, I have to say, there's something to be said about going through the struggle of learning the base techniques to get good, especially developing the creative eye, the composition, all those aspects that this device will not do. Uh, if you're more of a, an advanced uh, intermediate, uh, you know, amateur pro-am kind of photographer, and you're just looking for a device like this to automate some of the tasks like the photo stacking and the star trails, that sort of thing, then that I could actually see a lot of value for uh, for you to do that. So that's kind of my take. I would say for most newbies, uh, stay away from things like this. You want to actually learn uh, the techniques the old-fashioned way because the skills you're going to get out of that are much more important than uh, than uh, cheating and, uh, and having the device like this do it for you. So, I hope you liked this video. If you did, hit the like button, hit a share if you want to share this with somebody else who might find some value out of this. Uh, feel free to leave a comment what you thought, what else you'd like to see on my channel, and hey, just generally ask me anything you want. Uh, more than happy to help you out. Uh, if you are interested in my free sunset guide, I highly suggest you go check it out. I'll put a link below. It's just right there in the URL, but you can download my guide and I will teach you how to take fantastic sunsets. Have a good one and I will see you soon.